Hi, I'm David Brevnik with the Brevnik Fishing Team, and today I'm going to teach you guys all you need to know about bait, like keeping bait and bait pins and keeping your bait healthy. Because this is something I've really studied a lot because I know it's very important when you're keeping bait to keep it healthy, keep it strong, and make it live a long time. And all you need to know about the bait pins because bait pins are very important. This video might become two parts, we'll see we're on time at the end of this video. So now let's get started because we've really got a lot of ground to cover. So let's start out with the mesh sizes. So the most common mesh sizes that I find are between like a quarter inch to a half inch and that's really good for pretty much anything. Now the smaller your mesh obviously the, small, the less the water flow is going to be. So mesh size is important because the smaller the mesh the less water that goes in and out so there's less circulation. The bigger the mesh the more water goes in and out so there's more circulation. So there's a lot of things you have to keep put into play here. You have to put into play the current, how much current there is. If there's a lot of current, you might want to go with smaller mesh. That way the baits aren't getting wiped out and they can swim easier. But if there's like a, a moderate amount of current, which is good, you can go with the bigger mesh size. That way the current can really go through there. The baits can get really well oxygenated. They can be healthy. They can move around and they won't not have enough oxygen. So you got to really keep your bait healthy and really in tip top shape. Because if you're going out for a tournament, you're going fun fishing, you want to have bait really nice and lively and frisky. That way you get bites almost immediately. And I find baits that I've had penned up for a week or two work a whole lot better than the baits I just caught that morning. So if it's not a lot of current, you definitely want to go with a bigger mesh size. Now, you might also want to go with a bigger bait pin too. That's something also to keep in mind. A bigger bait pin obviously is going to have more area for the fish to go. That means you can put more fish in it. Or if you want to like say you want to keep let's say 50 baits and a little 2x2 two two bait pin that's maybe like that round I don't really think you can do it because they might not have enough water flow and also it depends on the current and the mesh size too and I wouldn't want to keep them in there for too long but if you keep a bigger bait pin if you were to put the same amount of baits in like a, say like a 6 foot long one it's like 3 feet wide 3 feet tall you could probably keep it in there longer or even something a little bit smaller than that you could keep them in there longer like weeks, um, I've kept baits up to one month before, blue runners, but there's really a lot of stuff you have to put into play when you're doing that. So let's talk about like the types of bait pins. So there's several different types. You can make one and you just buy like a barrel and drill a bunch of holes in it. That's what I first started doing when I first like started out. I was like, no oh, cheap way to do it. Just buy a hip barrel, put a bunch of holes in it. So that might be a good idea for if you have a lot of water flow. But what I actually had to do was put a pump in it. I didn't really like the pump either because I found like whenever the baits would swim by the pump, they would get shoom, they would get pushed around so easily. I didn't like that. So I didn't really like the barrel. And also I found a lot of times, like my area, I, I would consider a moderate current here because like if you can see right now, there's not really a lot of current. And I actually just look, but it's pretty moderate. It doesn't look like there's a lot, but there's a little bit more. And when it's really rough through here, there's a good, there's a pretty good amount. So my place would be between moderate and high, but like in these back canals, if you live in the back of the canal, your current flow is definitely a lot less. You're going to have to have a bigger mesh or bigger bait pin, one of those two or both, to keep your bait healthy and strong and make it live longer. So that's something you have to keep in mind. But what I found, even though my place has pretty good current where I keep my bait at my dock, I have found dead baits in there all the time. I've kept maybe 20 baits and then two days later I'll go and I'll look and I'll find dead baits. And now most of the time these baits aren't because I have touched them. Most of the time it's just because I think lack of current flow and also something else when you catch your baits when you go out and you catch your baits when you do it use one of those D hookers and it's really simple to use. I'll have a video coming out later to use but basically you would hold the weight and you lift the fish up and the weight of the fish would make it come off the sabiki and you just put in your live well. Try not to touch your baits and then when I scoop out my baits, let me get my net right here. When I scoop out my baits, I like to use this bait, the bait net and scoop them out one by one. This is a cheaper one. Um, you, you can buy aluminum ones but this is plastic. I just got this because sometimes when you're running, you just leave it sitting up on top of there on a cooler or something like right here they just fly right out so I'm gonna put that away okay so that's something to keep in mind so that's why I normally go with a cheaper one you can buy an aluminum one but that one I actually haven't lost yet I've had it for like a, a year or two which is surprising 
at one time I went through like two bait pens, I mean, not bait pens, two bait nets on two different trips. So that's something that happens too sometimes and it's a pain in the butt to scoop out the baits by your hand because sometimes they're really fast too and they're hard too. And also the baits that have little pointy stuff so when you go to grab them, you, they poke you and you're like, ah, and you get frustrated because it hurts and it hurts really bad. But so another type of bait pen you can use wire bait pen. Now this is gonna be more hardy type. It's definitely gonna hurt you. Like when you go to reach inside, the ends of the wire are definitely gonna hurt. Um, same thing with the bait barrel. Like if you have like a rough edge, you go to reach inside, it's gonna hurt. I haven't found a single bait pen actually that has like uh, smooth edges. But I have heard from D and B that they're trying to come out with something that has like very smooth edges. So far, like the plastic ones, the polyethylene, like the collapsible ones, I found the best. But let's keep talking about wire while we're at it so wire is good it's like very bulky definitely no sharks or barracudas can get in it so I mean that's pretty much everywhere you will see sharks and barracudas around in canals um, you gotta keep your bait safe sometimes otters will get in there and they'll tear it up and that's a pain in the butt but I'm but they can't tear up the wire because it's just too strong for them unless you use super weak wire but also something with wire, after two or three years, I noticed I used to have a wire bait pin too. And it actually started to rust and break apart and fall apart. And now I have holes in it where I can stick my fist in it and I threw it away. Because just I just didn't like it. But those are definitely going to be more expensive. Um, if you're not, you can make it. They're fairly easy to make from what I hear. But it's going to take a lot of time. At least probably three or four hours depending on the size. So it's really not going to be something that you probably would want to do. But it's an option but what I like is the collapsible bait pins because you can just travel anywhere you can put it in your boat you can put it in your car and you can go let's say if you wanted to go to the other side of the state and you have your boat on a trailer you can just take it to the other side of the state you can drop it off from marina keep it there a few days and I really like the collapsible bait pins a lot more especially when you're not using it like if you go like in the winter time I don't really go offshore like in January and February I don't really go offshore a lot so I just put it in this house in the shed you want to keep it in a dry area that way it doesn't get meldew on it and I just like the collapsible better because it's just so easy to store and it's just really good too but the collapsible ones are plastic they're made out of polyethylene so far the one I use I've not found any otters getting to although I have seen otters around here I have not seen them wreck into my bait I have not had any bites from it looks like any bite marks like from sharks or barracudas even though I have seen them try to go in it and grab something but they couldn't because the uh, mesh is too strong. It's like a polyethylene mesh. I use a DMB bait pin because I found it's really good. It definitely does keep your bait stronger, healthier, and longer, like they say. And also, I have not had a single bait that has died in my bait pin, my collapsible bait pin too. But that's something that's really important is to make sure you have as much bait as you can because when you go out, you don't know if the day is going to be slow or it's going to be a hot bite. So you want to be able to keep as much bait as you can. So the polyethylene bait pins are really good as the ones I actually prefer now I do know they are supposed to be UV resistant but I don't trust the fact even though I've had let it sit out for four five six months ten months at a time one time so that's something you want to keep in mind so these bait pins you can keep out in the sun but I prefer to keep them in a shaded area like when you're not using them. put them in your shed in the backyard you put them in your house in your garage put them anywhere really and, but that's something to keep in mind and then there's also the netting bait pins which I absolutely do not advise because I used to have one and it actually got torn up by otters I bought another one and it got torn up by barracudas so do not buy the nylon mesh bait pins because I find they just get cut up and tore up really easily even though they are pretty convenient they're very lightweight they're very easy to store but just do not buy it and then also something you want to keep in mind is that if you're keeping it at a dock or at a marina keep in mind there's going to be oysters there's going to be barnacles there and you pull it up it's going to get scraped and it's going to tear and then your bait is going to be able to get out unless you patch it which I do not know how to do very well but that's something to keep in mind so I would recommend going to the collapsible bait pin um, I prefer D&B I'll have them linked below in the description you can send them an email dbbaitpins db bait pins at gmail.com or just check, check out dbmarinesupplies.com go under fishing gear go to the collapsible and you'll see all the bait pins there so that's something to keep in mind I use a bigger bait pin to keep more baits because I want to be able to keep them healthy and strong so now let's talk about 
when you go and you have your bait pin. If you want it floating, you want it to sink down, you want to go down to the bottom. So I do not recommend putting your bait pin down at the bottom because when the current is moving, the mud or the sand or whatever the bottom is, is picking up, it's getting your bait pins, your baits are breathing it. Most time your bait is in the open water. Remember like those blue runners, the scar minnows, the Spanish sardines. They're out in open water, clean water. They're not used to sucking up mud and dirt. They're not like some catfish or anything like that or some pinfish. Some pinfish would be fine. But I have even found pinfish when I had my uh, barrel have dead pinfish in it too. And also I used to keep that on the bottom too. And I tried keeping it on the surface and neither one really worked that well. But So what you want to do is you want to keep it right off the bottom. If, you, if it's like in the summer and it's hot in your canal or wherever you live. If it's hot... You want to probably want to put it in the middle of the water column. You just go on the boat, check the depth, or you, what you could even do is you could send it down, like you put like a brick in or something. But what I like about like wire bait pins, I don't really like wire bait pins. I would recommend a collapsible bait pin. But you could just take the float off of it and you could send it down to the bottom and then bring it a foot or two up the bottom, and that should be good. And you just tie it off. But also, what I like about the DMB bait pins, they have the float on it. But if you want to, you could just clip the float off, and then you you could just take the float off and just keep it for when you want it to be on the surface like right now I normally keep my bait on the surface March through middle of June and then from middle of June from middle middle of June to end of August I'll keep it close to the bottom and then from September all the way to December I'll keep it at the top so that's something to keep in mind because when you send it down further and deeper if your bait is going to stay cooler so that is going to be able to keep it healthier and stronger so that's what I would recommend doing and then when you go to put it back on you could just zip tie them back on to the outer to the outside of the bait pin to whatever height you'd want it in the water and that's just something really good to do they already have the floats with them you just gotta buy the zip ties and zip, zip ties are super cheap so that's something to keep in mind when you're keeping your bait at your dock make sure it's at the right water level so that way they'll be able to stay healthier and longer. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this part of the video. This is going to be part one. We're going to do another part next week. In the beginning of next week, you'll see another video on bait pins. And we'll talk more about bait pins. We'll talk about feeding them and so much feeding your bait and so much more. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. So thanks for watching, guys. And until next time.